Um, so for the, if you've been with us for the past few weeks, we've been going through the book of Hebrews. We did Hebrews chapter 3 last week. But this week we're going to take a little detour. We're going to be talking about a different topic. So you guys can flip your Bibles to Leviticus. We're going to read through the whole book of Leviticus. I'm just kidding. No, we're not doing that. That would be fun though. Huh? The law of Moses. In, but no, we're do, not doing anything like that. But what we're going to be talking about today is the mission. Aaron, you can get out of Leviticus. <laughs> Specifically, motivation for the mission. And that's what my ser- sermon this morning is called. The title of my sermon is Motivation for the Mission. Amen? Amen. Before we jump into the motivation part, though, I just want to talk a little bit about the mission. I was, when, I, when I was preparing this, I was like, you know, we talk about the, the mission of Jesus, the mission of God all the time. But what does the word mission actually mean? So I was like, you know, I'm going to Google this. Google knows all. So I Googled it. And the dictionary definition for a mission is a specific task with which a person or a group is charged. Okay? So it's a task that if, for which a person or group is charged. And so most of you guys know that I'm a registered nurse at Chief Andrew Isaac Health Center. You know, and I have a mission at my job. I'm still trying to figure out what it is. <laughs> but my mission at my work is that, my job is that I have to make sure that my team has everything that they have to do their job well. You know, my job is to make sure that they can take care of their patients and do everything that they need to do. And that's my mission. You know, I think we all have little missions in life, whether you're in school, at work, whatever, We all have our tasks that we are charged with that we have to take care of. But as Christians, if we want to be disciples, we all have a mission. Before Jesus left this earth, he gave us a mission. There's actually scripture in the Bible that says the Great Commission. In Matthew 28, 18 through 20, we'll read that. It says, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. All right. So before Jesus died and he went to heaven, he told us, he told his disciples, hey, I want you to go and make more disciples, baptize them and teach them everything I have taught you. Amen. That was their mission. That was their task. And that's our task. Amen. Go and spread the love of Jesus to the world. That's our mission. That brings me to what I want to talk about today. And that is what should motivate us on our mission. What should motivate us to go and make disciples? Now, what should be our motivation? What should push us towards it? You guys can turn your Bibles to a scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We'll be there in a minute. But I think the answer is quite simple in theory, but in application is a little bit more difficult. But the answer to this question, what I think should motivate us is the grace of God. Amen? The fact that Jesus died for us, Jesus died for you so that you can have your sins forgiven, so that you can have the opportunity to go to heaven. That's what should motivate us to want to share that with other people. Amen? Mm-hmm. We want to share that with whoever may, be, may cross our path. But a scripture that kind of talks about this, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 11 through 15. It says, Since then we know what it is to fear the Lord. We try to persuade others. What we are is plain to God, and I hope it is also plain to your conscience. We are not trying to commend ourselves to you again, but are giving you an opportunity to take pride in us so that you can answer those who take pride in what is seen rather than what is in the heart. If we are out of our mind, as some say, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all, therefore all died. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. Okay, so we should be compelled by the love of God, by the grace of God, by his mercy. The fact that he died for us, that should motivate us to go and spread his word to others. Amen. 
God's grace should be our motivation for the mission. And today I have a few things from God's grace that I want to talk about. A few examples from Jesus' life that, should mo- help, that can help motivate us toward the mission. The first thing is the selflessness of Jesus. The selfless mission. Second thing is his sacrifice. And the last thing we'll talk about is his love. But before we jump in to all this, let's bow our heads and let's pray for the service. Dear God in heaven, just want to come before you, God, and thank you for this morning. Thank you so much just bringing us, for bringing us all here together to worship you, to sing to you, to hear about you, God. I pray that you can be with us and help open up our hearts, help open up our minds, help us to be able to learn something and to be able to apply it to our lives this week. And God, I just thank you so much for today. I th- pray that you can bless it. And in Jesus' name, I pray all these things. Amen. Amen. All righty. So first thing we're going to be talking about is the selfless mission. Amen. And so let's turn to a scripture, uh, Philippians 2. We'll be there in a minute. But Jesus is the perfect example of selflessness. You know, he spent his whole life going around preaching, going around teaching, healing people, living his life for others, for his disciples and for those around him. And he even went to the cross and died selflessly for everyone. And Jesus didn't do this just for fun. You know, he did it so that we would follow his example. He did it so that we could live our lives selflessly and serve others to help them. Amen? So when I think of someone, the most selfless person I can think of, I think of my mom. And I got a picture here. It looks like we're in a Coca-Cola yeah. ad. <laughs> this is my mom. She got a fanny pack on and I got a sweet haircut, you know? So anyway, so I, I think about my mom, you know, she had three boys and then obviously a husband. So four boys in the house. She cleaned the house all the time. You know, I would get mad because she would move the things that I put there and we go, mom, you, you don't leave it up. But she would clean the house. She would cook for us. And it wasn't, she didn't just take care of us. She would have other families in. She would watch all my friends so that their parents could go to work, whatever it was. She is so serving, so selfless of our family and of others. I cannot think of anyone more selfless than my mom, Stephanie, with her mullet here. (laughs) And I honestly, I don't think, I don't think you will meet anyone who's more fruitful in the mission than my mom. No offense to you guys if you think otherwise, but my mom is super mission minded because she really depicts the example this example of selflessness and living her life for others let's read the scripture in second in uh, philippians 2 that talks about this selflessness and paul says do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit rather in humility value others above yourselves not looking to your own interests but each of you to the interests of others in your relationships in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant and being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Complete selflessness right here. Jesus laid himself low and put others up, even though he had, every, he had every reason to bring himself up. He was God, essentially. And he calls us to do the same. It says here, do nothing out of selfish ambition. Do nothing. Lift others above yourself. Keep others' interests in mind. You know, and I was thinking about this, but what happens when we live selflessly like this? What happens? Well, I think people are going to notice, right? People will notice that you're living a selfless life, especially in our society today where everybody, whether they know it or not, is brought up to be selfish, especially in America. Get what you got to get. Live for yourself or your family even. But everything else is, it's all about you, right? But if we're living selflessly, People will see that. People will be drawn to that. Be like, what's wrong with this person? Why are they living for all these other people? Like, they're crazy. You can help change people's lives when you change yours to be more selfless. 
My question for you guys this morning is who are you living your life for? Who are you living your life for? When people look at your life, do they see someone who's selfless? Or do they see someone who's selfish? Because if we want to help people come to God, if we want to help people on this mission, we've got to follow Christ's example of selfless, selflessness. Amen? Amen. We've got to be motivated by His grace. And that brings me to the next motivation that I want to talk about. And it's closely related to selflessness, and that's sacrifice, amen? The sacrificial mission. You know, Jesus' sacrifice, the, Jesus, the sacrifice of Jesus should motivate us toward the mission. You know, Jesus was selfless, and it takes a lot of selflessness to sacrifice, right? And in the case of Jesus, he, what, he took, did the ultimate sacrifice for our sins, and just like how Jesus sacrificed himself for us, we got to be sacrificing ourselves for others. And that's what he calls us to do. But the thing about sacrifice is it's not comfortable. You know, giving up yourself and giving to others, that's not something that we normally want to do. Now, I want to share a little bit about my grandpa, Grandpa Keith, the man I'm named after. Here's a good picture of him right here. Look at how handsome he is. That's uh, when he got married, I guess. <laughs> That's what I'm guessing from the picture. But um, my grandpa is awesome. First of all, his name is Keith. Second of all, he is a very sacrificial man, especially for his family. So my grandpa grew up in Pennsylvania, lived out in, in farms and stuff. And when he had his own family, he got married, he had his own family, he didn't want his family to grow up in the drama that was going on, on around the town. So he's like, you know what? I'm going to move to Canada. So that's what he did. He moved to northern BC and bought a 1,500 acre, acre farm so that he could get his family away from that and start his own thing. And so he, he took his family, dragged them up when my mom was eight, up to Dawson Creek, BC, which is pretty far north, gets really cold. And he went to work, chopped down all these trees, built a house, did all these things for his family and for us sacrificed everything he had back home to move on up to Canada. And I'm pretty happy about that. <laughs> no, he gave everything he had. He, and his, it wasn't a comfortable time for him. You know, at one point, they got this house on the land, and it was 40 below in the middle of winter, and it burnt down. Yeah, that really was a bummer. And they lost all their pictures. Like, my mom has no pictures from before she was 14 or something, because they all burnt. And they, they lost a lot of stuff, and they... But he continued to sacrifice, continued to work. And the amazing thing about his sacrifice is that it eventually led to him becoming a disciple. You know, his whole life he wasn't a disciple. But when he turned 75, him and my grandma here, Janet, became disciples. They turned to God and gave their lives to God. And it's amazing to see that. And, and my, my family on that side has been slowly turning to God. I have an aunt who became a disciple recently and another cousin. You know, it's amazing to see what his sacrifice has led to. <coughs> you can turn to a scripture in 1 Corinthians in, in chapter 9. And here we can see how we are called to sacrifice. God calls us to sacrifice, to put in work, to, to really push ourselves to help save others. And we'll read it here. 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27. Do you not know that in a race, Paul says here, do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to, to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not run like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. You know, Paul calls us here to sacrifice, to push ourselves, to run the race, to challenge ourselves to become better so that we can win that race and help others win that race with us. Amen? Amen. My question for you is, are you following the example of Christ's sacrifice? 
Are you running the race and laying your life down for those around you, just like Jesus did? Because when we're sacrificing ourselves for others, it can have an amazing impact that we, we don't even know. You know, because my grandpa laid his life down for his family his whole life. Eventually, it led to him becoming a disciple, and now his whole family's becoming Christians. It's crazy. Didn't see that coming growing up. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> we can impact others and help him turn to him help them turn to him when we're sacrificing ourselves. And this brings me to the last thing I want to talk about today. And sacrifice and selflessness mean nothing without it. You guys know what it is? Love. All right. The mission of love right there. The mission of love. The reason why Jesus was so selfless, the reason why he sacrificed himself for us was because he loves us. Right? He loves us so much that he went to the cross to die for you. That's pretty crazy, huh? You guys can turn your Bibles to John, 1 John chapter 4, our last scripture. But God showed his love for us through his son. He loves us so much, more than we could even imagine. He was willing to send his son to die for us, and we're called to love others the way that he loved us. And that's pretty crazy. It talks about it in 1 John chapter 4. It says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we ought to love one another. There, no one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. Wow. So God showed his love for us through sending his son to die for your sins. So we ought to love others the way he loved us. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that one of the best ways that we can love others is to show them <laughs> God's love. It's to show them God's grace and how God sent their son to die for them. Essentially, one of the best ways we can love others is through God's mission he's given us. God has given us a mission, a task to go out and make disciples, teach them to obey everything he commanded you, to help people become Christians, to help people get to heaven. Think about that. You have the opportunity to help change someone's life so that they can go to heaven. You can, have, you can help change someone's eternal destination. You know, through Jesus, obviously, obviously it's not you, but through Jesus, you can say something to somebody. Study the Bible with somebody. Teach somebody, somebody about the Bible and they can, in turn, be able to get to heaven. What's more loving than that? I can't think of anything else. What's more loving than having an eternal impact on someone's life? You know, I think about my life and I've been loved a lot. You know, I grew up going to church. My dad's a preacher man. I'm a preacher's kid. You know, I grew up going to church every Sunday, every Wednesday. I went to teen group kids class, whatever you, whatever, you name it, I went to it. But that didn't make me a Christian, just growing up going to all these, all these things. You know, and my parents loved me enough to teach me what the Bible said and challenged me enough to make my own decisions. You know, and I studied the Bible with some guys. Some guys sat me down, challenged me on what the Bible said, and challenged me to live by it. And they loved me that way. And then I, I became a disciple, and now I have these relationships that helped me continue to see God's grace and see his love with Casey and my wife. My wife first, then Casey. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I did meet Casey I've first. I've known you long. I'm, <laughs> I'm just kidding. And then, you know, and people like Nick, who challenged me to love others and pushed me to share what I have with other people. You know, the amazing thing about this is when we're truly loving others, we won't, it's, we won't only impact people's lives eternally, but we'll build amazing relationships at the same time. We'll build these long-lasting relationships built on God's love along the way, and it'll be fun. You know, it's not like, oh, I 
this life sucks until I get to heaven. No, it's like, man, I'm going to heaven. I'm bringing everybody with me. We're going to have fun. You know, it's great. That's, what, that's how I like to think about it. The question is, how are you loving others? How are you loving others? Are you loving the lost and trying to show them God's love? And does God's love motivate you to love others? Because God calls us to love others. You know, give to others, sacrifice, and be selfless. You know, the, the thing about all of this, about the selflessness, sacrifice, and the love is that it's not easy. It's not easy to bring ourselves low. It's not easy to sacrifice for others. It's not easy to love everyone. It's easy to love some people, but not everyone. And, but the thing is, Jesus never said it was going to be easy. And honestly, nothing worth doing is easy. Right? But Jesus gives us the perfect example to follow. Amen? In a few minutes, we're going to take communion. And communion is a time where we remember the sacrifice that God made for us, the grace of God. We remember the body and blood of Jesus. So there's little pieces of bread that are going to be passed around, little cups of juice that represent the body and the blood of Jesus. And as we take communion today, I want us to think about these aspects of God's grace, you know, Jesus' selflessness, his sacrifice, and his love for us. And how he gave everything so that we could have a life. Let's think about the love that he has for us. And as we think about these things, we meditate. There'll be a time of meditation and silence. Let's think about how we can be motivated by these things to share it with others. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Let's pray for the body and blood of Jesus. Dear God in heaven, just want to come before you, God, and thank you for this, this grace that you've given us. This opportunity to be able to go to heaven. This opportunity to be able to live forever with you. Thank you so much for sending your son to die for our sins so that we could have this opportunity, God. And I just thank you so much for everything that you bless us with. Help us to be selfless. Help us to sacrifice. And help us to love like you love, God. And I praise you. And I thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.